Cours d'eau sanitaire est une expression française qui... <coughs> In 1821, during the worst parts of the yellow fever, French troops were deployed between the border of Spain and France to prevent the disease from entering. It became known as a cordon sanitaire, which literally translates to sanitary cordon. Beginning in the 1980s, the term was first adopted into politics. In Belgium, a far-right Flemish nationalist named Vlaams Bloch and his party started to make significant gains. Seen by most as a racist group, The rest of the political parties banded together to ban Vlam's party from ever joining a coalition government and formed a grand coalition in opposition to them. This concept of blocking a political party, essentially deplatforming them from governance, would occur multiple times in Europe throughout the following decades. Deplatforming ideas seen as radical proved to be an effective method in stopping their spread, while at the same time providing an argument that democracy itself was being prevented in the process. If you've turned into the lobster wire lately, you've probably found yourself hearing a lot about Patreon. It's a crowdfunding platform that allows content generators to be paid directly by their fans for their work. Recently, Patreon took the bold step of banning Carl Benjamin, otherwise known as Simon Novotel. This happened the day after Milo Yiannopoulos was banned from the platform for being associated with the Proud Boys, an organization they labeled as a hate group. How's that glorious 2019 comeback coming? And you find out who your friends are at difficult times. You get Well, really, what happens is you get left with the dregs. You get left with people who really have no other option. I'm officially disassociating myself from the Proud Boys. In all capacities, forever, I quit. This sparked a boil of outrage from Jordan Peterson and Dave Rubin, longtime allies of Benjamin, in spite of his clownish antics. With 300,000 retweets. Fuck. Fuck you. Fuck you, Bernie. Fuck off. Trump did not try to divide you by race, religion, and gender and nationality. You are the cunts dividing people by race and gender. It's a fucking women's march, Bernie! They declared Patreon to be an enemy of free speech and announced they would seek out alternatives. This, in turn, caused both their Patreon subscriber numbers to plummet in free fall. Sam Harris read The Moral Landscape and took the bold step of abandoning the ship altogether, depending now solely on PayPal and cryptocurrency to receive donations. Of course, I have a relationship to the unseen, so uh, yeah, I guess I do believe in ghosts. You know, you win that argument. And now, lo and behold, Dave Rubin and Jordan Peterson have followed through on their promise to voluntarily deplatform themselves. So we're going to send that. Oops, don't look at that. To support a moronic misogynist in his quest to prove that even classical liberals can be ejected from UKIP for being too extreme. Do you think you have no privilege? The privilege of being discriminated against. What a privilege. I'll give that up. Let's get rid of affirmative action. I'll get rid of my privilege. Bunny! These all came at the height of a banner year for deplatforming, as 2018 saw Alex Jones be evicted from YouTube as part of a massive gay onion Soros led cabbage patch lizard conspiracy. <laughs> deplatforming and demonetization isn't just something that happens to the right, however. YouTube has had a long standing problem of demonetizing LGBTQ videos on the basis that they deem anything sexual to be unadvertiser friendly. What I don't get is labeling an entire minority as inappropriate. These can be as innocuous as someone simply talking about their own experiences with gender dysphoria. Not to mention, it does seem slightly hypocritical to think that advertisers are overwhelmingly afraid of sex. I'm happy and angry. And we haven't even mentioned college campuses. The liberal hive minds where the larva queen feeds thousands of her brood woke gender neutral NPCs with social Marxist shit. They've been ground zero for protesters losing their minds anytime Milo, Ben, Charles, and Anne come to town, prompting fresh debates over censorship. Jordan Peterson has frequently stated that colleges are propaganda factories for the left, indoctrinating students with the horrors of equality of outcome. Although data and studies seem to paint a different picture. According to the Department of Education, within 4,583 colleges and universities in the United States, only 63 speech incidents were reported. Georgetown University's Free Speech Project suggests the crisis is more than a little overblown. Even more surprising is the data shows there is a free speech problem on campuses, left-wing professors being fired for their opinions. Jeffrey Sachs, a political scientist at Canada's Acadia University, put together a database of all the incidents where a professor was dismissed for political speech in the United States between 2015 and 2017, 
and found that left-wing professors were more frequently dismissed for speech than their conservative ones. That's their response <laughs> to cancel the dance because uh, there's a lot yeah. of people that can't go. Mm. Is there a problem with that? Well, the problem with that is self-evident, but it's part of this absolute onslaught by the radical leftists on the fundamental normative structures of our culture. So why don't we get something out of the way so we can all start on the same page? What is freedom of speech? In essence, it's the principle that individuals and communities within a society can articulate their opinions and ideas without fear of retaliation or censorship. This means the government can't arrest you for what you say. It's part of Article 19 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, part of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, and its essence can be found in the First Amendment to the goddamn United States Constitution. Which, unfortunately, doesn't apply to slaves. There are, of course, limits to freedom of speech, and in most countries, they take the form of libel, slander, inciting violence, and, of course, pornography. Freedom means different things to different people. Absolute freedom means you have the right to kill your neighbor if you don't agree with them. So, within any society, we accept that we have limits to our freedom and try to operate within that framework or work towards changing it, ideally for the better. There is an accruing agreement that there's some deep discussion that has to be had about sexual morality. Mm -hmm. And that's a place where, despite the dis differences, that some sort of bipartisan discussion might occur. It's like, obviously, people are very upset about the manner in which sexual activity is occurring among, especially among young people. They're upset on the left and they're upset on the right. So it would be, well, so that's one of the things I thought I might, I might discuss today. I think that would be very powerful. The digital age has complicated this issue much further. The majority of us no longer meet in town halls or city squares to share ideas. Hell, we don't even meet in bars anymore to find compatible penises. I think that would be very powerful. Social media is our primary marketplace of ideas, and like the rest of the corporate structure, it's only a small minority of companies that control the majority of platforms we use. Most people take for granted how liberal our Silicon Valley overlords tend to appear. It's refreshing that Alexa is so woke, but one must always keep in mind that corporate decisions are based solely on profit and her wokeness is only reflective of what will make her sell the most units and make the largest amount of customers comfortable with what she says. If Alexa had been released in the 1960s, she would have said statements like, Homosexuality is a sin and should be illegal. To the shock of only a minority of the population. After all, Sargon likes to describe himself as a classical liberal. Sure, Jean-Baptiste Say and David Ricardo have contributed more to the concept of democracy than all of the intellectual dark web put together. But you have to remember, these concepts were considered socially progressive by 19th century standards. John Locke, the biggest daddy of all liberalism after maybe Francis Bacon, was still a product of his time. It's revolutionary that he thought knowledge could be determined only by experience but he was also in conflict with his religious beliefs and advocated for the death penalty. He drew verbal inspiration from scripture. He was progressive for the 1700s and is one of the fathers of modern democracy, but if he was running for office now, you probably wouldn't vote for him. So just to let you know, right, there's a feminist MP called Jess Phillips, and I wouldn't rape her. I will never rape her, ever. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and to a much larger extent, ICQ, <laughs> are the new marketplace of ideas, but they are private entities owned by corporations. And like all corporations, only a small minority control the majority of platforms. Also, being private corporations, they don't fall under the purview of the First Amendment, unless Jordan Peterson is suggesting they be nationalized for the good of the collective. In 2001, in a fit of manic collective insanity, I decided to start seeing if I could find Soviet-era artifacts online. YouTube, just like the rest, has terms of service that everyone has to abide by, even us. Our recent video on Mark Randazza got flagged immediately as something that some viewers may find offensive, and as a result, it couldn't be commented on, or liked, or shared. Alex Jones was promoting dangerous conspiracy theories like Pizzagate, and that the Sandy Hook victims' families were crisis actors. 
The former got so popular that someone went into Comet Ping Pong Pizzeria and fired an AR-15 assault rifle three times. Alex Jones had to issue an apology for his complicity in the matter. The latter resulted in the families whose children had been murdered getting harassed. The major tech companies have been mysterious and vague towards all the details of their account termination policies, but inciting violence, harassment, or doxing are pretty clear violations of their terms. There are still plenty of right-wing voices on the platform who are following the terms of service, from Sargon himself, Lauren Southern, all the way to the extreme Mountain Dew cream-flavored Richard Spencer. Yeah. This is the problem when we allow Puerto Ricans into politics. Um. <laughs> Oh, it's actually a tweet. Now we don't have time to go through the minefield of examples or even begin to understand what Jack Dorsey is thinking on a regular basis. Banks reportedly posted on Twitter that Dorsey had quote, sent me his hair in an envelope because I was supposed to make him an amulet for protection. The Streisand effect refers to the phenomenon of when something is censored, demand for it increases. This was true for WikiLeaks, for example. In 2010, when its original domain site was shut down, they were able to move to a secondary Swiss domain. Within 24 hours, numerous mirror sites came online and their information was able to spread throughout the internet with more users trying to access their information in light of the much publicized initial shutdown. But overall, early research into the topic is showing that it does have a chilling effect on those being targeted. Researchers in Georgia Tech last year found that when Reddit banned the platform's most toxic subreddits, it resulted in less hate speech appearing elsewhere in the site. Early results from Data and Society sent to an academic listserv in 2017 noted that it's quote, unclear what the unintended effects of no platforming will be in the near and distant future. Right now, this can be construed as an incredibly positive step that platforms are making in responding to public complaints that their services are being used to spread hate speech and further radicalize individuals. However, there could be other unintended consequences. There has already been pushback on the right about the capacity and ethics of technology companies making these decisions. We've also seen an exodus towards sites like Gab and away from the more mainstream social media networks. There is also the bigger question of debating. On February 4th, 2014, Bill Nye the Science Bro, and yeah, it doesn't quite have the same ring to it, Bill, Bill Nye the Science Bro, debated Ken, I want to have Jesus inside me ham on the topic of creationism. While there's no question Bill Nye made an eloquent argument for the science of evolution from natural selection, it seems counterproductive why anyone would be debating this topic in the year 2014. Should Ken Ham have the right to debate people that two of every animal are responsible for the grotesque incest ridden by diversity we have on our planet today? In evolution, the fundamental idea in all biology, the basis of modern medicine, Oh, we, stop okay, so, okay, No, okay. no, okay. No. So, bro. Yes, he has every right to do so. No one on the left is saying he doesn't. But prominent evolutionary biologists, or even engineers, should not be the ones entertaining that crackery, and instead leave it for universities that find any merit in a thousand-year-old fable to give that madman a platform. Wouldn't you agree that a certain amount of dogmatism is not only not bad, but it's a sign of progress? What do I mean by this? Would you like to live in a country where you have to argue against rape? No, I would like to live in a country where the fact that you don't rape is simply in a good sense, dogmatic. It's a fact. So if anyone argues, you know, in that stupid way, what if women really enjoy it or whatever, you don't even fight him, you just laugh at him. People like Dave Rubin who hide behind the banner of unadulterated free speech are simply looking for forms to discredit social movements without having to address their points directly. Uh, hey Dave, this is a very brave move on your part, kudos. Have you heard about the SJW nonsense? I don't, I, don't, I don't even care about those guys. Does It really just, just honestly doesn't matter. It's why he's so afraid of actual debate. In fact, it's why all of them are. So with a topic this monstrous, what exactly is the point we're trying to make? Well, that's simple, dear viewer. That you should accept the Hive Queen as your Lord Mother and accept the sweet, delicious nectar of the One thing never echoed by the right, or much of the left for that matter, is the problem unregulated, unbridled, good old-fashioned Reaganomic capitalism has on free speech or the marketplace of ideas. In the 1980s, President Reagan relaxed the merger guidelines, and in each decade since, there have been waves of mergers and concentrations, each consecutively bigger than the last. We now live in an era where two corporations control 90% of the beer Americans drink, five banks control over half of the nation's assets, four airline companies dominate all of air traffic, six media companies control, well, the media. Google controls over 90% of online searches and Facebook dominates more than 70% of all social networking traffic.
We have the illusion of choice thanks to so many brands being in front of us all the time, but typically forget that these brands are owned by just a small minority of companies. This is something that even free market capitalists should be worried about because, in essence, is capitalism really capitalism without competition? Ah! Well, yes, it is, but, you know, let's not try to explain more. Because it turns out that the capitalist system has built into it mechanisms which we call competition. We like to talk about competition, but we are hesitant most of the time to ask and pursue the question, where does competition lead? And it turns out that competition leads to its own extinction. And as corporations consume each other at an unstoppable rate, there won't be any more platforms to be thrown out of. They'll just be one. Hey, thanks so much for watching, guys. If you want more of our stuff, you can click down here, hit the like button. You can click down here, hit the subscribe button and uh, continue watching. Thanks. And you can leave hate comments, too. I mean, the Internet loves hate comments. Uh, please don't do that. <laughs> Start a flame war. Who knows? <laughs> the power is yours. <laughs> Welcome to the Internet. <laughs> oh, God, help us all. <laughs>